you guys, this is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to learn how to do some SI unit conversions or some metric unit conversions. Now, in an earlier video, we learned about the SI or metric unit prefixes. And uh, we learned, for example, that mega is, uh, means a million or 10 to the six, kilo means a thousand or 10 to the third, hecto means a hundred or 10 to the second, etc., etc., etc. And so what we can do is we can take these metric unit prefixes or SI unit prefixes and put them on some metric stairs, all right? So what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do some metric unit conversion using metric stairs first, and then I'm going to show you how to do some metric unit conversions using dimensional analysis. Now, metric stairs are actually a, a, an easy way of doing some metric unit conversions in your head. However, they uh, require that you memorize the metric prefixes mega, kilo, hecto, deca, deci, centi, milli, and micro. Okay, these are some of the more common metric unit prefixes that we'll be talking about uh, when we talk about SI units and, and the metric system. So it's important that you memorize them. And right here we've got, or we have base units, meters, liters, and grams. Okay, so here's how it works. Here's how to do some SI unit or metric unit conversion using the metric stairs. It says right here, the number of steps you take is the number of times you have to move the decimal in the known quantities. So the number of steps you take on the metric stairs is the number of times you have to move the decimal in the known quantity. Furthermore, it says if you move down the stairs or to the right, then you have to move the decimal to the right. And if you have to move up the stairs or to the left, then you're going to have to move the decimal to the left. So let's take a look at this example here. We have 10 and a half millimeters. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how many decimeters this is. So milli is right here on the metric stairs, right? Milli is right here. And what we want to do is we want to figure out how many decimeters this is. So deci is right here. Well, if you take a look to go from milli to deci, that's going to be one, two steps. So we have to move this decimal here two times. We know that. Furthermore, if we take a look, which way are we moving on the, decimal, uh, on the metric stairs? Well, to go from milli to deci, we're moving up and to the left. So we're going to have to move this decimal here two times to the left. So if we're starting off with 10 and a half millimeters, and we want to figure out how many decimeters this is, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move this decimal two times to the left. And if we do that, here's once, here's twice. If we put the decimal here now, what we will end up with is 0 0.105 decimeters. Okay, so 10 and a half uh, millimeters is the same thing as 0 0.105 decimeters. Okay, so here's our answer to this problem right here. So let's use the metric stairs now to solve problems uh, where we're being asked to convert between the different metric prefixes. All right, here we go. Let's work uh, some sample problems using the metric stairs. It says we have five and a half centimeters. We want to figure out how many millimeters this is. So centi is right here. That's what we're starting with. The known quantity here is in centimeters. So we're starting off with centimeters. And we want to go to millimeters, which is right here. How many steps on the metric stairs is that? Well, we need to take one step. And which way are we moving on the metric stairs? Well, if we go from centi to milli, it looks like we're moving down and to the right. So we have to move this decimal one time to the right. And if we slide this decimal over here, what we will end up with is 55 millimeters. So five and a half centimeters is the same thing as 55 millimeters. Let's take a look at this next problem. We have 93.2 meters. Meters is right here. It is a base unit. And we want to figure out how many megameters it is, right? Capital M in the metric prefixes means mega. And so uh, if we take a look, we're starting right here at base unit. How many steps? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that is going to be six times we're going to move our decimal. And which way do we have to move on these metric stairs? We, well, we're moving up and to the left. So we're going to move this decimal six times to the left. And if we do that, we will end up with 0 0.00000932 megameters as our final answer. So 93.2 meters is the same thing as uh, 0 0.00000932 megameters. Now you might, might be wondering why there aren't any sort of metric prefixes right here at 10 to the 4th or 10 to the 5th. Well, 
That is because there really aren't any. So we go from kilo, 10 to the third, to mega, which is 10 to the sixth, but understand that there are two little steps in between that we need to account for. And same thing right here. There is no metric prefix for 10 to the negative fourth or 10 to the negative fifth. But make sure when you uh, memorize these metric stairs that you are taking those into consideration. So let's look at this problem right here. We have 120.34 kilograms. We want to figure out how many milligrams this is. So kilo is right here on the metric stairs. And we need to take one, two, three, four, five, six steps to get down to milli, the prefix milli. So we're going to have to move this decimal six times. Which way? Well, we had to move down and to the right. So we have to move this decimal six times to the right. And if we do that, we will end up with 1, 2, 0, 3, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0 milligrams. Put some commas in here. And so what we end up with is 120,340,000 milligrams, equaling 120.34 kilograms. Let's take a look at this example right here. We have 33.6 milliliters. Milli is right here. We want to figure out how many liters this is. Liters is right here. So can you guess what the final answer is going to be here? Well, let's figure it out. In order to go from milli up here to liters, which is a base unit, we're going to have to take one, two, three steps. So this decimal is going to have to be moved three times. And which way are we moving? Well, we're going from milli up into the left to get to the base unit right here. So we're going to have to move this decimal to the left three times, and we end up with 0 0.0336 liters. So 33.6 milliliters is the same thing as 0 0.0336 liters. Let's look at this last one here. We have 5.5 hectograms. Hecto is right here. We want to figure out how many milligrams this is. Milli is right here. So to go from hecto down to milli, we're going to have to take one, two, three, four, five steps, it looks like. So this decimal is going to have to be moved five times, and we're moving down and to the right here. So we're going to have to move this decimal to the right. And if we move this decimal to the right five times, we will end up with five, five, zero, 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 zero milligrams, or 550,000 milligrams. Okay, so that is how we do metric unit conversions or SI unit conversions using the metric stairs, and it involves you memorizing the metric prefixes that we start uh, that we talked about in an earlier video. Now let's try to do some metric unit conversion or SI unit conversion using some dimensional analysis. Okay, in an earlier video we learned about dimensional analysis, and when we use dimensional analysis to do um, unit conversions, we have to come up with what are called equivalent statements. And so what we're looking at in front of us right now are several different equivalent statements. For example, we know that one meter is the same thing as 1,000 millimeters. And if we flip this equivalent statement around, we can also say that 1,000 millimeters equals or is the same thing as one meter. Right? If we take a look, we know that one kiloliter is 1,000 liters or 1,000 liters is one kiloliter. Right, and right here we know one gram is 100 centigrams, or we know 100 centigrams is a gram, right? Right here we know that one kilogram is 1,000 grams, or if we flip this equivalent statement upside down, we know that 1,000 grams is one gram. All right, so we could use these different equivalent statements to solve metric uh, unit conversions using dimensional analysis. So let's apply the concept of uh, equivalent statements to solve several different types of problems using dimensional analysis. Okay, in this first example here, we have 12 and a half meters. We want to figure out how many millimeters this is. Okay, so we have 12 and a half meters. And what we want to do here is we want to cancel out the unit meter. So where are we going to put that in this net, in our equivalent statement? Well, we're going to end up putting that at the bottom, so that way when we do our math here momentarily, these units will cancel out. Remember, if you have something on top and that same thing on the bottom, they can cancel out. And last, we're trying to convert this to millimeters, so we're going to put millimeters at the top of our next fraction or equivalent statement. So which one of these two equivalent statements do you think we're going to use? Well, we're going to end up using this one right here. 
to one that has millimeters on top and meters on the bottom. And what do we know? Well, we know that there are 1,000 millimeters in one meter. And so now we can see that meters on top and bottom are going to cancel out, leaving us with millimeters left over. And so we get our calculator out now. We take 12 and a half times 1,000. However, you know when you multiply by a power of 10, all you're doing is you're moving the decimal to the right. Okay, so we're going to move this decimal to the right three times. 10, I'm sorry, uh, 1,000 is the same thing as 10 to the third. So if we move this decimal to the right three times, we should end up with 12,500. Okay, so 12 and a half meters is the same thing as 12,500 millimeters. Let's take a look at another problem. Okay, in this problem right here, it says we have 1.3 times 10 to the negative third kilogram. We want to figure out how many grams this is. Now, don't let the scientific notation fool you. In an earlier video, we learned all about scientific notation, and you can refer to that if you'd like. So we have 1.3 times 10 to the negative third kilograms. And what we want to do in our equivalent statement right here is we want to cancel out kilograms. So we're going to put that at the bottom of our, equi of our uh, equivalent statement here. And we want to convert this to grams. So we're going to put this at the top. And so which of these two equivalent statements does this look like? Well, we're going to use this one right here. We know there are 1,000 grams in one kilogram. This unit will now cancel. And what we end up with is 1.3. That's it. When you take this number times this number in your calculator, you get 1.3. 1.3 grams should be the final answer here. Okay, so 1.3 times 10 to the negative third kilograms is equal to 1.3 grams. And if you wanted to, you can actually do this problem in your head. You know that 1,000 is 10 to the third. And 10 to the third times 10 to the negative third is 10 to the zero or 1. And 1 times 1.3 is 1.3. All right, let's take a look at one last example in which we use a two-step dimensional analysis approach. Okay, in this problem here, it says we have 4.6 hectoliters. We want to figure out how many milliliters this is. So this is going to be a two-step conversion problem. So we have 4.6 milliliters, or hectoliters, sorry. And what we want to first do is we want to cancel out hectoliters. And let's first convert that to liters. And after we're done with this, we're going to want to cancel out liters. So that will go on the bottom of this equivalent statement right here. And we're going to want to convert to milliliters. So that will go on top. So now let's go ahead and fill these in here. Which of these two equivalent statements does this look like right here? Well, it looks like it's going to be this one right here. We know that one hectoliter is 100 liters. And over here, which two of these equivalent statements right here does this look like? Well, this looks like this one right here. We know that there are 1,000 milliliters in one liter. Now, let's take a look at what happens. We have hectoliters on top that cancel out with the hectoliters on bottom. We have liters on top that cancel out with the liters on bottom. And the only unit that's left over here is going to be milliliters in our final answer. And so now we take 4.6 times 100 times 1,000, and we should end up with, let's see here, if we move the desk, this is 10 to the 2, this is 10 to the 3. If we multiply these together, 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 3rd is 10 to the 5th. So if we move this decimal 5 times to the right, we should end up with our answer. Four hundred and sixty thousand milliliters is our final answer here. And so, four point six hectoliters is going to be the same thing as four hundred and sixty thousand milliliters. Okay, so there are two different ways that you guys can use to solve problems uh, where you're asked to convert between the different metric prefixes. You can either do the metric stairs or you can go ahead and do the dimensional analysis. Either way, you should get the same answer. And if you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right-hand corner, and I hope this was helpful.